Good afternoon from my hometown airport, Vancouver International. After having some issues on flying with my airline of choice, Air Canada, my alternate was to fly on ANA to Tokyo. From YBR, Air Canada flies to Tokyo Narita, while ANA flies to Tokyo Haneda. Showing up just over two hours prior to departure, the check-in line wasn't too long, but it did take a while to process everyone. I flew with ANA on their 787-10 almost two years ago during that post-COVID lull, and it was okay to say the least. So now I'm hoping there is an improvement this time around. This time I'll be flying in their 787-9. Lounge access is not included with an economy ticket obviously, but my status grants me into the Maple Leaf Lounge here at the international side of YVR. I won't go into detail, but you can check out my video on this lounge I made last year, and I'll leave a link here. It's just a nice place to relax and have a quick bite prior to leaving. So how can I say ANA is Japan's best airline without even flying on JAL? Well, that's the next video to come out, where I fly on them to Taipei on the Classic 767. Although today's plane is far from a classic, this almost 4 year old 787-9. ANA's Dreamliner for their international routes, there's two different layouts. The only difference being one has 21 premium economy seats while the other has 14. Unlike JAL, ANA has a Dreamliner laid out in a standard 333 configuration, while JAL has 242 for the extra width. But noticing shortly after getting to the gate, ANA only boards with 30 minutes prior to departure, along with a minor delay due to the late arrival. But this was done in a super quick manner. But here's my seat today, 39A but I eventually ended up taking 40A in the very last row. Starting from top to bottom, there's a handy coat hook, which is definitely not a standard in economy. A Panasonic IFE screen with a USB-A jack underneath, the same one you'd find on Air Canada's Dreamliner, and this doesn't tilt. A remote for when you get a little too tired of sticking your arm out for too long. A two fold tray table with a cup holder that's cut out. Now let's talk about the excellent storage here. The main seat back pocket has tons of space and the usual safety card and sickness bag is included, along with a disposable pair of headphones. Then there's two excellent smaller pockets for all your smaller belongings. Legroom here, absolutely amazing, and I can say this is industry leading. Not to mention the footrest, although I didn't use this. To wrap things up here, we got a universal power outlet between every seat, along with adjustable headrests. And sorry, there's no air nozzles. To cap it off, there's a blanket and pillow waiting at every seat. And not to mention the pillow cover was actually a proper fabric. Despite the boarding delay, we only ended up leaving 5 minutes after departure time, which was pretty impressive, even for a fairly full flight.
settling in for a long flight, now is the time to see what movies are on offer. The IFE interface is older than the ones on ANA 787-10, but I was shocked for how responsive it was. Like, one of the most responsive screens I've used with absolutely zero lag. It has your typical new releases, but you can't have a favorites playlist of movies and TV shows. I actually find this comes in handy a lot during long flights. And there's also a duty-free catalog available. Well into the flight, the meal service started with a small snack service. This consisted of Japanese rice crackers and a drink. I really appreciate the smaller snack service, but we were a solid two hours into the flight before the first meal was served, and I was just getting really hungry. I really liked the menu handout that they had available for food options, which was either pork or beef over rice. The tray came with a salad, crackers and cream cheese, the main, ham and egg salad, and I'm not really sure what this is over bok choy. This came with metal cutlery, chopsticks, and a toothpick, which is awesome. And this tasted great even for outstation catering, but that stuff over bok choy was just a no. And who can't go wrong with ice cream for dessert? Even local Vancouver ice cream too. If you've flown on a Dreamliner before, the lavatories are pretty much all the same. But as per Japanese customaries, this toilet has a bidet. Before passing out, flight attendants came around with customs and declaration cards, along with green tea as well. The generous legroom and recline, even in the last row, made for a comfortable nap, and I had zero issues passing out here. After a few hours, I had the Subway sandwich I brought with me, which has been a staple for me on these transcontinental and long haul flights, and I've been doing it over the last few years. There were also small sandwiches available too, but this is a lot better. I passed out again and was surprised to see we were 15 minutes away from landing at Tokyo Haneda. And this is probably my biggest disappointment and it seems to be a common theme here with ANA. It's not just me, but they keep all the lights on during landing, even in the dark. It just defeats the purpose of having all the window blinds open, considering you're just looking at your own reflection. I really enjoyed flying with a a this time around compared to when I first flew with them two years ago, and that was just a so-so flight. My only grades were just a bit nitpicky and really don't reflect the average passenger, like the late meal service and the lights on during the landing. But these are points I should mention, as this was my first time experience I should mention to you, the viewer. The flight crew were very courteous and friendly, not to mention the seats and meals were both very good. So for future sake, I shouldn't have any hesitation when flying with ANA again or recommending to anyone else to fly with them given the opportunity. They have great customaries and culture of what traveling to Japan should feel like. But at the same time, I'd like to see what Gel has to offer. So stay tuned for that future review. That being said, if you feel like it, drop a like and subscribe. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.